Welcome to the WDW News Today podcast. I'm your host, Eric Morton, and with me is uh, our intrepid leader, Tom Corliss. And, uh, you know, we're going to get to it. It's going to be part two of our uh, visiting Tokyo Disneyland, uh, Tokyo Disney Resort uh, kind of information. And it's so cool that Eric needs to wear shades. Well, quick disclaimer, I apologize to the viewers. I'm having quite a time with the pollen count, I guess, right now. And my allergies have been going crazy for about three days. And I thought maybe, you know, rather than uh, just show you puffy red runny eyes for the whole episode, I would just wear sunglasses. Uh, this, the sad byproduct of this is that these are polarized, so I can't read the screen very well that I'm looking at. So um, hopefully this we'll figure it out. This is totally about the pollen and not... The 12 moonshine sours that Eric had last night. No, I I actually, no, I'm not, I haven't had a drink since last Friday, but last Friday we uh, we might have hit you it too hard. You haven't had bourbon since last no? Friday? No, uh-uh. Um, wow. You know, Friday was rough, though. You were there. Was that Friday? Yeah, I only had three drinks, so I was fine. Yeah. yeah. Well, Berlin serenaded us. That was great. Epcot wow. festivals, they're the best. Um, and then you're you're in the final stretch, packing up, getting out of your apartment, and moving to Japan. Yeah, some of my furniture's in this room right now <laughs> because we're still waiting on the space next door to be, you know, completed. ready for us to move in. Yeah, yeah, so. we're going to have a much bigger space soon, and uh, we're going to fill it immediately with uh, storage units full of stuff. Yeah, so that ought to be fun. And we um, have to sort through all of it. Oh boy, we you're going to be in Tokyo. Well, <laughs> I'm sure someone will call me on the phone and be like, what's this? What's what is this thing, Tom? Yeah. Um, also, last night, we completed our March Madness for 2024, the yeah. greatest building in the history of Walt Disney World. Don't spoil it in case they want to go watch So it. if you want to watch that, it's over on our sister channel, WWNT.TV. There were some major, major upsets in this event, but yeah. I think... Yeah, an appropriate winner was maybe determined at the end. I could have made a yeah. good argument for about three or four different uh, buildings, I think. Everything that was there at the end felt right, which is not a thing that always happens with us. Yeah. Um, there is one thing that happened that I think people will take great offense to, but it happened pretty early on last night. Yeah, there was a there was a major upset. Yeah. Probably the biggest upset in the history of our March Madness. It's possible. Yeah, but um, yeah, we did crown that winner. So check it out on www.nt.tv. It's in the little live videos yeah, from last news night. Yeah, uh, Yeah, www the, news. The tonight. last two episodes will cover the full tournament. Yeah, and yeah. it was something else. It was a good time. I yeah. think a worthy champion was named, and we did a great job yeah. whittling through all the competitors. You know, I thought about it afterward too, and. And, uh, you know, we go. I have a Universal annual pass. I go to Universal a lot. But, like, I don't think you could do a field of 64, like, iconic buildings at Universal. Orlando I think it would Resort. have to be 64 buildings you'd most like to demolish. <laughs> no, I mean, I just think, I don't think they have a, that sort of uh, level of architecture. Yeah, certainly not in the first park, right? Like, Hollywood and New York are pretty. And, and obviously the, you know, Diagon area. But that's about it. I mean, the rest is kind of ugh, it's kind of ugly. I yeah. mean, the park icon for the studios is basically some archways. It's the arch, right? And then the other side. I mean, obviously, the the, yeah. the lighthouse is pretty. The Pharaoh's <laughs> lighthouse. Yeah, but it's essentially like, uh, I guess it's a building because you can, I think you can go in it and go up. But I, I mean, it's not. I mean, they can. We they can. can. Yeah. We can't. Yeah. So I don't know. Is it really a building? Is it, it might just be a tower. Jurassic, Jurassic, Park's, Jurassic Park Visitor Center is a pretty building, now obstructed by a roller coaster, but nonetheless a pretty building. Yeah, it'd be interesting. Maybe we should, uh, maybe we should do a mini tournament of Universal, Universal stuff one next of these year. Days. We'll start Universal ones now. Yeah. yeah. I mean, why not? We do right. have a Universal division. I mean, it, the, the reality is that nobody watched the show last night because everyone was glued to Disney Plus for the Taylor Swift Eras Tour making its debut. At the same, she chose to go right up against us in that time slot. It's her mistake. It's pretty aggressive. We took a good half of her viewership, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure she's uh, really feeling it today and kind of feeling stupid for doing making gonna, that they're gonna write a song. She's going to write a song about us, how mean we were to her. Really? What would it be called? I don't know. No. <laughs> I don't know. 
I don't know enough Taylor Swift songs, but I... I mean, I know Reputation because the Reputation album spoke to me because I felt like on a much smaller scale what I was experiencing in my life at many times, but... Um, I have watched uh, maybe an hour of the concert. You started it? It's pretty good. I started yeah. it while I was working today, just on the yeah. other monitor. Uh, it's pretty good. I don't know all the songs, but I would certainly recognize several of them. Yeah. So, And I mean, there's a certain... Um, genuineness that comes across from her that it yeah. might be fake, but it seems really genuine. Her like appreciation for her fans and and her I don't know, if I had that much money I'd be pretty appreciative of people, I think. Yeah, but there are plenty of people that have a lot of money that are not appreciative people. That's true. I don't know how, um, how you could be like that, right? But we've we talked about this when we did I think our first episode when we talked about this community, right? Obviously again, uh one 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 billionth of the scale of her fame, right? Um, what we all do in this community. But I've, I've heard there's some people in the community that several times I've heard from several different people, like they asked, like, to, they just went to say hello and ask for a picture. And the person just went, I'm too busy. Dizzy. And I was like, oh, okay. And I was like, I've never done that to anybody. So I had a woman one time, uh, uh, there's a family, and they're like, in the same monorail car as me, but like on the opposite side of the benches. Yeah. And the lady recognized me and and yeah. uh, older woman, and she said, "Can can we get a picture?" And I was like, "Well, sure." Like and I'm thinking, like when we stop, because like we're not going to take a picture. It's dark. It's nighttime yeah. in a crowded monorail, and she's not, and she can't really even reach over to where I am. Yeah. So when we get off the monorail, like I kind of stood there, and then like. Eventually, I walked off because maybe they didn't get off the monorail. I don't know. I I felt oh, like, just, oh, was, maybe you, I you thought they the were effort, getting yeah. off the... So I was like, yeah. oh, I kind of felt like a jerk. But then I was like, I think that they're going to live without a picture of Yeah, me. it just wasn't coordinated. I, yeah. I'm sure they understood. That wasn't... You You didn't deny them. You just no. you just had to go where you were going. Not now, Chief. I'm in the zone. Yeah. yeah. yeah so, you know, we'll have people... We have people to, uh, come up sometimes in the middle of filming and talk, and that's no big deal. Yeah, Some of them didn't even make it into the final video. <laughs> yeah, we didn't. Charlie missed editing someone coming up and saying hello during food and wine. Yeah, that's um, fine. It doesn't bother me. No, yeah. no. I mean, again, appreciative that the, those those people are the reason we are where we are. Right. So I'm. The, I'm always shocked at how many people in California recognize us. Yeah. Because, like, cover even though we do cover their parks, I feel yeah. like. That community over there is kind of clicky and kind of protective um, of their stuff. Like, we yeah. don't belong. And um, I'm glad to see that some of the guests and, like, viewers don't have that kind of same opinion. I think we have a very specific audience in California, which are people that like to come here. Yeah. And so we're their connection to stay in the loop here. And they probably have annual passes to here, honestly. Yeah. Um, we're, we're the connection for those people. I think if you're like the Anaheim people where you stick to Disneyland and Disneyland's your thing and that's it, you probably don't really watch us. But Yeah. I just renewed know. my annual pass here, by the way. So we were, ta- people oh, were talking about the too. last night. Yeah. I had to because I wanted to go to Hollywood Studios on May 1st, yeah, but my pass same. expired on like March 30th or something. I mean, like it that. might be a good to go day. We don't know. You <laughs> and I had the same expiration date. The worst is... Um, Why do people think we're a couple? I don't know. When Runaway Railway opened... Yeah, um, that was the worst. My, I was in, like, this, like, 4 a.m., mob, 5 a.m., you know, people, like, kind of lining up uh, to ride it, to, yeah. to get into the park in the morning. Yeah. And a woman comes by, a, a cast member, with an iPad, while we're all kind of, like, herded into this pack. Yeah. Um, Right before the gates open, uh, maybe 10 minutes before the gates open, um, comes through with an iPad and checks our passes. Yeah. And mine had expired like the day before. Oh. I'm like, ooh. And I managed to somehow dip out of that crowd. Pete uh, Carney was there, and he saved me a spot. Mm. Um, I dipped out of that crowd, went over, and renewed my pass and got back in line just as they opened the gates. Wow. That, was, that could have been a disaster. I mean, you're probably better off going home anyway. Yeah, but um, <laughs> what a lot of people don't know about annual passes is, uh, I think it was l- last year maybe, I had to get a park reservation that was outside of the window. Of when, it was after my pass was set to expire. Yeah. But my pass wasn't, it was like still more than 90 days you out. You weren't I, in the period you could renew. Right, I wasn't if, within yeah. the renewal period. 
But I needed to make that park pass because I think it was like it might have been for the fiftieth or it might have been. It was something that was going fast. It was yeah. something that I need to make sure that I had yeah. a park pass for. And so I wasn't in the renewal window. So what I had to do actually was go and purchase outright an annual pass, no payment plan available, none of that stuff. I had to like just all out of pocket buy an annu- buy another annual pass and like activate that to be able to make the park reservation. Wow. So a uh, little tip. So you had two APs for yeah. like a month or two? Yeah. But the other one didn't start until I. Oh, yeah. 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 So I don't know. It was weird, but they would let me make a park reservation on it. But it's like a voucher. Basically, I was buying like it was kind of like I was buying a voucher. Yeah, they got to figure that out, right? They should be a way where you can make at least a handful for like when you renew, right? It should be like I plan on renewing, you know, and it kind of holds them. And if you don't renew, they just release them, right? Like, yeah, I don't know. They're, or let me. Do it. Yeah, I mean, I know they yeah. won't because they'll do price hikes. But like, let yeah. me do a two-year annual pass. Yeah. Let me just roll. Let me just keep it going down the line, right? I don't know. Make it a subscription where you just pay a monthly fee. Yeah. And your pass never expires as long. Like Amazon Prime, I don't have to renew every year, do I? Maybe you do. Maybe, maybe it's like just get maybe of, they just renew it without get even rid telling of the you. Red, the reservation system. Like, I know you want to keep us at a Magic Kingdom on weekends, and just make that a rule. Get rid of the entire reservation system and just make it so that we we only have to make a reservation if we want to go to Magic Kingdom on a Saturday or a Sunday. And that's it. That should be it. it isn't that how it was sold to us originally when they were going to do the well, good-to-go good days? Well, the good-to-go days are not necessarily all of those days. Um, so yeah. we'll have to see. But that's what I would do. But I guess they, they're they worried that they might need to keep us out from another day at some point. They're like, you know, let's just let's just wait. Because obviously, like, July 4th moves every – like, all those holidays move every year. So, mm-hmm. you know, that might be why. Um, and before we get started, uh, they Disney apparently does have some front runners for the CEO position. Yeah. I just and talked about it on your, news today. You, you backed know, your horse, right? You know who I'm getting. I'm getting mine, Josh, tomorrow. Yeah. And I know we have some YouTube people and that watch our channel who are like they're they're very disillusioned with Josh, which right. I I kind of I kind of made the point on news today where I think I think you guys are wrong, you know. I think a lot of people were wrong. Like like I said before, like I remember being ostracized those first three or four years that Bob Chapek was in charge of parks and resorts because people told me, oh, everything's great. Look at how great everything is. Just, you're crazy. And look, look how that turned out, right? I, I think you could always I, – look, I have studied this my entire life and, and ad nauseum for the last 16 years where I've done this professionally, right? I would hope in all that amount of time being surrounded by this seven days a week, 16 hours a day, which is usually what I work. Um, I would hope being surrounded by it that much that I have some idea what the trends are. And I always, you can, look, it's a big corporation, so things take a while to take shape, right? It's a couple years before the wheels get going after a management shift. But there were just so many things in that first year or two of Bob Chapek that it was clear that he was bad news, right? And I think there were things in the first little period of Josh tomorrow that indicated to me that, oh, we're going to, we're going to try to turn this around a bit, right? Like, I'm not saying things are going to be turned around to the point that they're back to how they were in 1996. You know, I don't know that we're ever going back that far, but, um, you know, I, I certainly think improvements are happening. I think more will happen. And uh, I pr- prove me wrong. You know, in five years, if I was wrong, I'd gladly admit it. But in five years, if I was right, you're sure going to hear about it. I, I think one of the things that Josh has going for him would be just that he can get on stage and yeah. immediately let the people, like the D23 members and people at these expos know like that he gets it, right? That he likes this thing and he's yeah. into it. Yeah. Uh, and you never really got that from Chapek. He wasn't a guy that showed a lot of emotion, didn't really, didn't really ever show that he cared deeply about the parks experience. Yeah. Um but I wonder if Disney might go in a direction of a, a Hollywood person just because, um, you know, obviously part of Chapek's undoing was breaking faith with Hollywood. Yeah. Uh, and that's a big deal. Yeah. Uh, and the, you know, I mean, I would just think maybe a Hollywood person would come from outside the company based on their recent track record in Hollywood. Well, the four people that they, they named are all in the company. So yeah, I know. Joe, that's what I'm thinking. Joe Pitaro, which look. 
I don't. I love that they're putting Joe Pitaro there. That that's that's comical. No one that runs ESPN and the sports division of this company is ever getting that job yeah. uh, in a million years, right? Dana Walden. Jimmy, Jimmy so, Pitaro. Is it Jimmy? Joe? I think it's Jimmy Pitaro. Is it Jimmy Pitaro? I think so. Oh, maybe. I, I don't know. know. Either way, it sounds like he's a, not, a guy that will He's you not up getting it. The, the other three are, are more probable, I think. Right. Um, but. Was it Alan Bergman or Alan Bergman? Alan Bergman, I believe. Yeah. Dana uh, Walden. Dana Walden and Josh and tomorrow. Josh tomorrow. Yeah, those three, those three are all likely, I would say. You know, Pitaro might be listed in there just to make him feel good about his executive position. Like, you know, sometimes you you let people think they're in the running for the job because it makes them feel important, right? It's kind of something you have to go through the pace. It's like these are the four executives in the company that are doing a good, doing the best job and most qualified for the job. So at the least, Bob is you're going to at least interview and and work with these four people and and basically tell them they're in the running. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess we'll see. We're, they're not going to name anybody anytime soon. So. No, next year at the earliest. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, are we ready to get roll up our sleeves and dig back into Tokyo? Do you want I, to I will be. Recap There's a couple of things in the week? comments on it. So first of all, we we sometimes we do not do a lot of prep on this show. No. So I was somewhat <laughs> blindsided by the topic. So I tried my best off the top of my head to list. Uh, we did mostly dining last. We talked about hotels a little bit, but we did mostly dining for Tokyo Disney uh, last show. And so um, Camp Woodchuck got left out, which is at Disneyland and is a beautiful restaurant, really cute. And the waffle sandwich is pretty solid. Um, and I forget who brought that up, but thank you, whoever brought that up in the comments. I knew I was going to miss something. As far as table service, it's closing for eight months, but um, I was reminded because it's closing that um, Crystal Palace in Japan is pretty solid. It's a pretty solid buffet. Um, and, and one place you can get soda refills, which in other countries, soda refills are not really a thing. So, okay. Um, you know, that's one of the restaurants you can get it because it's buffet and you go up to the – and they had Melon Fanta on on the – Oh, the, boy. Yeah, on the soda fountain, which was pretty good. I had, I had several glasses of that. Um, those are those are good options. Someone, someone was a little mean. <coughs> you okay? Yeah, sorry. A little mean Excuse in the me. comments. I want to address this. Um, NZ Lo. Uh, wrote, my husband and I went to Japan late last year and ended our trip at Disney. Because of this, we didn't find the food at Tokyo Disney weird. Tom, not a great word to use. While Disney parks began in the U.S., most of the visitors from Tokyo Disney will be from Japan and surrounding countries. This is why the food is tailored to their tastes. As I said in the last show, it's not, though. My, I do not try to go into a place and just simply state my opinion I like to hear what other people have to say. So I've spoken to several dozen people who live in Japan of Japanese descent who go to Tokyo Disney a lot. And their thoughts on the food are very much in line with what I said. The word weird is not a word they found off-putting because even in, in the world of their cuisine, the food at Tokyo Disney was still mostly weird, or at the very least, they agreed that the quality level was not there in most cases. So These not are people born and raised in Japan who have been going to that resort their whole lives. People that maybe are even more qualified, not maybe, definitely are more qualified than myself to have this thought. And that's what I'm sharing with you. I agree with them. But I do not try to just share opinions that I'm like, well, I, this is the, I'm the only person that thinks this, and this is the definitive answer. No, because that doesn't help anybody. Now, are you saying, like, you know, in Tokyo at large, this is not the type of food that you would find? No. Are they trying to straddle a line of, like, let's come up with something that people here would identify yeah. with, but that people from other countries would uh, also eat and they missed well, the I, mark yeah. or is so it like it was, someone American, just spinning a wheel? What they wanted, they don't want Japanese food at the park because what they came for is the American theme park. Like that's what they wanted. They wanted to build the American theme park in Japan. And so, yeah, there are items that are Japanese. They're few and far between really because there are a lot of Americanized or I should say Japanese versions of American fast food. But I will tell you, in greater Japan, they do a great job with American fast food. KFC, 
like is a tradition for them. Right. It's it's become a thing. But also like they're known like they love McDonald's and all these other restaurants. And, and in some cases, they have dishes that do embrace their their, you know, the taste in that country and blend with those fast food restaurants. But I will tell you, like McDonald's hamburgers are still McDonald's hamburgers in Japan. Right. They may have seasonal or regional specialties. Right. But it's still McDonald's. Right. Like this is. Compared to McDonald's in Japan or any hamburger place in Japan, the hamburgers at Tokyo Disney are not good. No Japanese guest is going to tell you they loved Cape Cod Cook-Off. And if they did, it's only because they enjoyed the show. But ask them about the food. No one's going to tell you they've ever really enjoyed a meal at Cape Cod Cook-Off at Disney Sea. That hamburger, it's like... It's amazing they got it into the form of a beef patty because when you bite into it, it's mush. The hamburger is like a, a just just brown mush. Yes. Dis- it's disgusting. Their fries are good, though. I love the French fries. I do. Um, but this person went on to say, we found the quality fine, actually, even at a good meal at Volcania. So, look. I didn't like what I had at Volcania. I thought it was low quality for for even Asian cuisine at a theme park. Even if that was an American theme park, I would be – if that was a pan, – like I understand people like Panda Express. I think Panda Express is gross, right? But I would say I would rather eat Panda Express than Volcania. Like everything at Volcania had a weird – again, like the hamburger, a weird consistency that wasn't correct. Not for our culture, not for their culture, not for any human being culture. I just picture the mom in Better Off Dead making all the weird food. Uh, it's an 80s movie. You might be too young for this, but yeah, uh, it's a great movie. But the mom is uh, always preparing meals that are really bizarre and gross. Yeah. Like things are walking off the plate. And... But anyway, this, this person who I, I think has been to Japan once... Uh, attempted to correct me, and so I just wanted to jump. Let them in let here. them correct you. Well. Like I didn't. I want to show you in the YouTube. nine in the nine trips I've been to Japan, I have gone and done plenty of things outside of Tokyo Disney. I have spent weeks on end in Greater Tokyo. I spent time in Kyoto. I've been around and done some things. I've not solely gone to the parks, which is a thing. I will tell you, it's a thing I've done in other places because of time constraints and other reasons, right? Like it, the joke was, you know, seven trips to Paris before I actually went to Paris, the city. Yeah. Um, but I'm glad I waited because my parents were there. It was their first trip, and we did our first time at the Eiffel Tower and all that stuff. You know, I, it made it more meaningful. Did you wear a beret with your name on it? No. Mm. But it made it more meaningful. I'm, I'm glad I had waited, right? And so, like, Hong Kong, I haven't – I just haven't had time every time I've been to go into the city. I really want to, and I'm hoping – It looks beautiful. I was hoping to get to do it this trip, but this Japan trip kept getting shorter and shorter, so I don't know if it's going to happen or not. And then Shanghai, we were – it was 72 hours, and we were getting the hell out of there. Uh, <laughs> As I've been over before. But, I mean, somebody shared their experience, and it, it conflicts with yours. I mean, you and I yeah. don't always agree on food. Um, no, I know? like I agree. Like, look, so other people said they liked Volcania. You know, taste, f- taste in food in particular, like, is very subjective. Like, but yeah. people like different things. I'm saying that, like, I didn't like Volcania, and then I spoke to people who live there, and they're like, yeah, the the Japanese guests do go to Volcania a lot. I personally do not think the quality is great, and that was kind of the consensus, and that was the same with. Uh, China Voyager is the restaurant now that just magically popped into my head. China Voyager is the restaurant at Disneyland that's like that. that a lot of a lot of guests do that line for China Voyager will be super long, right? You need to pack your patience. I mean, the line for Casey's for, is long, and it, it's not a good hot dog. No, no, but still, I think that's more edible than a number of things I've had from a counter service restaurant yeah. at Tokyo Disney. There are things are of a weird consistency and quality. And I don't know what it is. It's definitely not a cultural thing because, again, I've been to many different restaurants of different types, including fast food restaurants in Japan. And that's just not a thing that you see in other places. It really is just Tokyo Disney's food is not good. I I can't believe I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this now. Universal Studios Japan has fantastic food. Really? Blows the other universals away. 
Like I love to eat in that park. I think I love eating in that park more than anything else in that park. The boulangerie, which we had the boulangerie in yep. our park here, right? It used to be at the entrance where the Today yep. Cafe is now. It was gross. Sandwiches were disgusting. We ate there and in, in, I've eaten there in Japan three times. Un, like the best counter service meals I've ever had. I had a salmon filled croissant sandwich. Was outrageous, phenomenal. Everything we've had from the Toadstool restaurant in, in Super Nintendo World there, incredible. Everything was great. Um, th- now, I will warn you, it, 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 this is a brief plug for USJ. Um, food in that park is super expensive, like more than you pay. Even though, again, the yen is weak, you will pay more for food at USJ than you do for food in, in the Florida parks. Okay. That's with changing the currency with, with the currency conversion. Um, but it's all very good. Like even Louis, which Louis pizza in, in USF is among the most deplorable food items in theme park history. Really? It's pretty solid in, in <coughs> Japan. Like I ate it. I was like, this is good. Also weird. The f- pizza comes with fries. All right. Well, they have pizza fries. That's it. No, thing. but the side with the pizza is French fries, and they're phenomenal. They're like steak fries, yeah. they're fantastic. Wait, so you think Louis at USF is bad? I haven't eaten at Louis at USF, but it's it terrible. looks good. It no. looks like you can get like a whole pizza there. Oh, I forgot you're from the Midwest. No, I. No, I mean it doesn't look. No, for theme park, it doesn't look worse than Pizza Rizzo. It no, doesn't look worse bad. than Pinocchio Village no, House. All bad. It doesn't look worse than any non like Via Napoli yeah. place at Disney World. I think all of those are on the similar level of garbage, though. Yeah, they're bad. Yeah, no, that's what I mean. I don't think many theme parks do fast food pizza well. I don't. I don't know if there's another park I could think of where I had fast food pizza and thought it was good. Other than, and this isn't even really fast food, when Pete Safari did the buff or the family style, yeah. the weird like table service Pete Safari thing they tested for a while, that was actually pretty decent. But, but the best counter service pizza I've had, um, for a little while it was Boardwalk Pizza and Pasta at California Adventure. But as we just saw at the festival, they oh, yeah, we had a pretty bad They slice. really slipped from that pedestal, yeah. Yeah. Well, that's too bad. But, um, yeah, so people said they liked Volcania. People did say they liked a couple places I did not. So I understand that. Um, but I hope you guys understand that I, I try. I take my recommendations very seriously, and they're not just purely my thoughts, right? I, I told you, like, I love the gyoza dog, but I preface that by saying a lot of people I brought like, were nope. not as blown away as I was. No, they had them one. They had them every time I went, but they weren't like, oh, my God, I have to have one like I am. Um, but the same thing, like the China Voyager and those, I, I want you guys to know that I ask other people and certainly people of different backgrounds and cultures that maybe I like, because my first thought is that was awful. Is why is it that bad? Or is it me? Am I, am I the problem? Yeah. It's me. Um, and then you ask enough people and it's Are like, Are you oh, in your no. Weiner era? Other people <laughs> that go to this park and live in this country also think China Voyager is kind of gross. So, okay, then, then it's not just me. Okay. Yeah. Um, you also there was a comment you brought up about uh, the shopping district. Yeah, people. Uh, we talked about food, so people brought up Expiari. Expiari is kind of their downtown Disney, um, and it is. Um, I, I, if you're going to go in there, I'm telling you now, the first directory you run into, take a picture and look at it long and hard, because it is the most confusing layout of a mall on this earth. I I've been in there. 25 times and I still don't know where I'm going. It just it, it like it feels like things repeat and there's weird and it just goes on forever. It's it's real ha, wacky. Have you ever done a cruise where you hit Port in Cozumel? And it's like this endless maze of a of a mall, but it's all kind of the same stuff. It's all people trying yeah. to sell you jewelry, all people trying to sell you like um Prescription meds. Uh, well, I mean tequila, that's the same as wherever we. And where it's did like we an go? endless maze. Where did we go on the November cruise? We went to Baja. Oh yeah, uh, you did. You went to California. which was very yeah. similar. Yeah, it was yeah. all the same touristy merchandise and prescription drugs, and yeah, yeah. It, was, it was very much the same. Yeah. Um. Anyway, XPR. Yeah, so people talked about eating. Some people were like, "Oh, I was told you should leave the park and eat there." Um, I don't think. 
in a day at a Tokyo Disney theme park, you really want to lose time and go out and have lunch. Now, if you want to leave a little early and have dinner somewhere in Xperia, sure. But I look, I've tried a bunch of places in Xperia, and I don't know that at that point, if you're going to take the monorail out to, to like the Maihama station area, you might as well just get on a train and go into actual Tokyo and get some real food at that point. Because, like, yeah, there's good sushi at Xperia, but it's not as good as anything you'll find in the city. Including like just, in subway stations. and Yeah, and, like, I honestly think my subway sushi was slightly better than the... It wasn't bad at Xperia, but it's not, like, outrageous. Uh, there's, like, a three Michelin star sushi restaurant in a subway in Tokyo. Oh, so absolutely, yeah. Um, that, like, there was a Netflix special about it. I yeah. think it's called uh, Jiro or Hero. Yeah. Um, J-I-R-O. Dreams of Sushi. Yeah. Um, then, um... Yeah. One of the best meals I've ever had in my life was in the subway. It was, um, we there was like a place that made chicken noodle Not ramen. Not the restaurant subway. Let's no. <laughs> there was a place that had chicken noodle ramen and it had all of six seats and it was in a subway station. It was fantastic. Um, but that's, that's what you should go out and do. If you're going to bother leaving the parks, you know, later in the day, just go get real food from, like, it's one of the best food cities in the world. Yeah. Go, just take the 10, 15-minute train ride and go over there and find something. You more likely could just get off the train at random, walk around, and find something better out there. Like, Xperia, again, the only thing I'm going to recommend is if someone is super picky, like, incredibly picky, then Xperia <laughs> is great. Yeah. Because, and, or, or you've been in Japan for several weeks. Because I will tell you, after a couple of weeks, you start to be like, man, I really need, like, American-style food. And so it's been, like, I, I remember the first trip, we were there for, like, two and a half weeks, and finally at the end, Josh and I were like, do you want to go, you want to go to, like, the, uh, what was it, is it Outback? At, oh, no, Applebee's. Do you want to go to the Applebee's oh my at XPR? And I, I won't go to Applebee's here, but my God, he's like, he's like, I know Applebee's is gross, but the chicken tenders are real solid. I was like, man, I could, I would kill for American style chicken tenders after two and a half weeks. Look, and again, one of the best food cities in the world, the food is incredible, but there's something about switching your diet up and the, and what they eat on the normal there on the regular, that eventually, like, your body start, you though I always equate it to being cursed like Captain Barbosa in Pirates of the Caribbean, where he goes, for too long I've been thirsty and haven't been able to quench it. For too long I've been hung, hunger and starving of hunger and haven't died. And that's how I feel in Japan. It's like this constant hunger. But here, this place that has amazing cuisine can't outdo Applebee's with chicken tenders. There's just something where your body like craves it. It's like being a pregnant woman. You're like, man, I haven't had food that I'm used to in two and a half weeks. Like everything I've had has been delicious. But oh my God, I crave like salty fried mm -hmm. food. And maybe, and the other thing is is weird is, is fresh vegetables. Mm -hmm. It's not that easy to find fresh vegetables. There's not a lot of things that come with fresh vegetables, right? The diet is very fish and rice heavy. And I love fish and rice, but, you know, God, I'd, I'd kill for a piece of broccoli. So we'd go to, like, Applebee's and get, like, broccoli and French fry, like, steamed broccoli and French fries and chicken tenders, and it would really hit the spot. Do they have Dollaritas? I don't think so. <laughs> I do not believe I they do. Never, no one there is drinking for quantity. I never would have guessed that, that this podcast would ever get into discussing Applebee's. I took my parents to, like, my parents after two weeks in Japan were ready to eat something they recognized. I think, and, and God bless them, they, they did great, and they ate all sorts of things they never would. And now, like, when I go up to visit them, we'll go to, like, Japanese restaurants and stuff yeah. like that. Like, it really opened their eyes to stuff. But... After two weeks, I was like, I'm going to take it easy on them today. Let's let's maybe go to the Red Lobster at Xperia. And we did. And it was still a little weird, but it was still Red the Lobster. Cheddar Bay Biscuits? Yeah. 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 Um, there was a whole thing with the Cheddar Bay. I won't get into it. But nonetheless, it was it hit the spot. Like, everyone was happy after. I was like, all right, let's go to the park now. Um, so, it, But Xperia, though, is it right outside the gates like Downtown Disney is at Disneyland? Or... Like you could walk right out there in five minutes, grab something, and come back into the park, or is it a little bit of a hike? You're not. You can walk between stuff, but you really want to just take the monorail. So the monorail goes to all four main destinations, right? So the, the monorail line will travel 
So the main the main train line that comes to Tokyo Disney Resort is is the Maihama, right? It comes to Maihama Station. So Maihama Station, the KO line goes to Maihama Station. I believe that's right. Um, Maihama Station is a major station. So that's at Maihama Station is Expiari and a monorail station. Are right outside the train station. There's a there's a little hotel there. I think it's a capsule hotel. I've never been in there. People, someone brought it up. You guys might know more than I do about that place. I want to stay in a capsule um, hotel. I kind of want to try it. It's a, maybe this trip I will. Maybe if I if I go, I will have to go to um, Osaka at some point because Donkey Kong. Is, we're gonna get invited to the media event for Donkey Kong. So. Um, so there's like a capsule hotel there and stuff. So there is from my home also the other. So this direction you have Expiari and also the Ambassador Hotel eventually way down. If you go the other way, you have the Tokyo Disneyland Hotel and Tokyo Disneyland. Not far, but you could also just stay on the monorail and it will go okay. around to, to, to Tokyo Disneyland and the Tokyo Disneyland Hotel. Then, so you can walk between Disneyland and Expiari. Very easy walk, not long. Then, uh, or just take the monorail. Then uh, things are a little further. So from Tokyo Disneyland, the next stop is Bayside Station. Bayside Station goes out to the um, official hotels of the Tokyo Disney Resort. And there are some actual, um, or they're, they're good name. I forget what the terminology is, but nonetheless, like partner, good neighbor. Yeah, but there's type also of official. There are also official hotels there, right? So the Toy Story Hotel is over there. They bought yeah. a plot. I think they owned it, I guess, and they they turned a plot into the Toy Story Hotel. That's between the Hilton and the Sheridan. The Hilton, the Sheridan, o o Cor Hotel Okora, Okoru. I haven't stayed at that. We one. do. We do have a um, room tour on this channel of the Sheraton. Yeah, I know. Did we not? Did I not do the Hilton too? Maybe uh, I you might. The but, but I, I'm I positive know. the Sheraton. I there. have several Sheraton. I've stayed at the Sheraton almost every trip. So there's. I can check right now. Um, let's see. But um, yeah, so there's several hotels over there. I highly recommend the Hilton and the Sheridan, and you can get great rates there. I've stayed as cheap as one twenty-five a night at either of those, and they're both beautiful hotels. Uh, so worth a shot. Toy Story Hotel is not bad for the price, and you get the benefits of being an official uh, resort guest. Oh yeah, oh no, only one's uploaded. I've only done one. I think I have more on my phone that just aren't uploaded. But if you want to get a taste of it, yeah, Sheridan Grand. Tokyo Bay, Tokyo Disney Resort, Ocean Dream, two double bedroom tour. Um, What's up? One of the the wigs are watching us record this live. Um, one of the wigs said, um, "My son loves mac and cheese. He wants to live in Japan." After hearing this, I don't think he'll last long. I, I think know. they. I'm pretty sure there's mac and cheese. Now all I can think of is the Cheddar Goblin I don't commercial. Know please stop with <laughs> the that. Cheddar Goblin. Um, Look it up. I'm the cheese it champion. That's a different thing. That's a different guy. Yeah. People figure out what either of those things are. Um, so, yeah, that goes there. And then the next stop on the monorail after um, uh, Bay, Bay, uh, Bayside Station is Tokyo Disney Sea. That's that's far too. You're not, you really, you can walk from Disney Sea to Xperi. It's kind of far. Now, if they let you exit out of the Fantasy Springs Hotel, that's a that's kind of a game changer. Then you could walk, you could walk from the entrance of Disney Sea out to Bayside Station. Then, which is pretty wild. So Disney Sea is a little bit of a hike from Tokyo Disneyland. So it's not like Disneyland and Disneyland Paris where they the parks face into a central area. Right. It's kind of the opposite. Turn them around. They face out. Uh -huh. So Disney Sea and Disneyland are back to back. Oh well, there's no park hopping, so. Not now, yeah. Not anymore. It's not that big an inconvenience. No, but it was easy with the monorail anyway. It didn't matter. The monorail ride was a world the, where the monorail is the monorail. Is doesn't it cost money constant? to ride the monorail? It does. Though? You buy a little monorail ticket. It's cute. It's a little collectible, but you do pay for the monorail. You're, the, the, look how happy you are to pay for I a monorail ticket. I love my monorail passes. It's so great. I have hundreds I love of paying them. the money for this. But every couple of weeks, they get new designs, whatever the seasonal events are or, or whatever's going on at the time. Um, I love them. It's I. There's something about there's something about walking up to the little machine and you throw the money in and it spits out the card and it's this cool design. And you get on the monorail. The monorail has Mickey windows and the music inside is playing. And you're on the way to Disney Sea and they play Whale of a Tail from Twenty Thousand Leagues and um, all this all this great music and it's just. 
their monorail is it, it, it's all the excitement I remember as a kid on the Disney monorail at Walt Disney. World. Do they have people in the station that work there that shove everyone into the monorail? Like I've seen. No, but they do have, Tokyo they have lots of videos. people working at the station. <laughs> Um, and they're very helpful, and they'll be like, "Oh, go go over here, please. Go to this gate." And then, you know, when you're at the gate, they try to. They're like, "Oh, please go in." And please. Mm. Um, and people with strollers. And my favorite thing is, it's I can't believe this is a thing, but there's a lip, right? So the monorail door and the and the platform are not like it pulls up, and this is a little higher. The monorail's so higher, or the or the, the monorail's higher. Okay. And so I always think it's funny because like all these people have strollers and stuff, and no one thinks about it. You just see. Kid, kids getting thrown over the ledge. Um, I think my mother with the wheelchair, like every time we tried one time to get her up and in, like I tried to like pop a wheelie with the wheelchair and then push her on. It didn't really work. So every time she just be like, I'll just get out. So she got out of the wheelchair and I'd have to push the wheelchair on alone and then take it off. And then she'd get in the wheelchair when we got off the monorail. Cause she didn't want to, she didn't want to go be, be kickstand onto the monorail. Yeah. And she didn't want me to, maybe accidentally drop her off the monorail either. So she would just go sit separately on the monorail. Well, um, really kind of where we left off, I think, was we were going to get to some of the attractions. Yeah. Uh, and the I think more. the best place to start actually is when you plan your day, because you reference things like having a reserve spot for the parade and DPA and all these things, how do I go about reserving all of this stuff? Whether this be uh, access to a ride or a parade viewing spot or anything else. You need to make sure the second you're in the park that your ticket is already linked into the app, into okay. the official app. If you bought from Kluke, if you're using Kluke to buy tickets, um, the email attachment or I believe when you log in, you can then access the PDF. It's a PDF that generates, which has a QR code. Scan that QR code into your app. Make sure you have that to scan in. Obviously, you can scan in with, with, the, with the PDF if you want. But I'm telling you, for the sake of time, have the have it loaded into the app already. When you have it loaded into the app, I don't know if this shot will work, Jake. You can show me. There's my ticket. See my ticket there? There it is. If I click on it, there's a Q. I'm going to block my QR code so you can't see it. But there's a QR code there. That's what they're going to scan you in with. The reason you want to have it attached is because... <coughs> Um, if you're fighting to get access to something, you need to book that the second everyone in your party is scanned in. Then once everyone is scanned in, you scroll down in the app. Uh, there, under my plan, there's the first logo there as of recording is Disney Premier Access. It has a little icon that has a DPA and like a star shooting around it. If you select DPA, well, you have to be in the park. It's not letting me even open it. Um, you can select that, and then that's what allows you to buy access to certain attractions. So parades have it. Uh, some nighttime shows believe at Disney Sea has it. Um, some of the seasonal parades and shows get it. So if you're going during a seasonal offering and you want to see one of those things, th those are going to be high demand, right? Especially these limited time things, right? So like... Right now, they have that Minnie's Thunderland thing going on. When I go, it'll be Donald's Quack City. D Donald's Quacky what Duck. What is that? Quacky Duck City. They're just seasonal events. Um, so there's like a parade. There's a special parade with Donald. Um, they're going to sell DPA for that. And because it's limited time, people are freaking out about it. So they're going to buy DPA. And you probably need to be in the park within the first 20 minutes of people let into the park to get that DPA. So I will tell cost? you. I forget. Um, 20 bucks? I think it's... it's uh, 10 bucks? I think they they change. But I believe it was somewhere... Yeah, I think it... Obviously, with the... Con, the, the con, um, what am I blanking on here? The uh, exchange rate yeah. keeps changing, right? When I was there, though, like the ride and parade ones were somewhere between 12 and 15 bucks uh, with, with the conversion. So... Um, but here's the thing is if, if you are only there a couple days and these things are very important to you, you need to get there early. You need to go okay. sit outside the park with all of them early. They'll be there. You will never be first in line for a turnstile because someone's out there at 4 a.m., I assure you. You don't need to be there at 4 a.m., 6 or 7 a.m., you'll probably be okay. It depends on the crowd levels when you go. Um, 
But also, again, depends how important it is to you. If you're going like a key day, if it's like the beginning of a seasonal event or something new, get there as early as you can, right? I remember when when Spencer and I went for the opening of Soren, I think we were in line outside at like 5.30 in the morning. And we needed to be. That's the only reason we got the the uh, premier access for it. There's no standby line for Soren. There was a standby line. Okay. Um, but it was four hours long. <laughs> it was opening day. What attractions have DP that can you buy access to? Um, Beauty and the Beast, Honey Happy Hunt. Ride with Baymax. Um, what? Yeah, because it's new. It's Alien Swirling Saucers. Yeah, but it's new and they love it. <laughs> but be, people pay to go on Alien Swirling Saucers I don't redecorated? Wait, I don't want to wait over an hour for that. I just bought the DPA. But it's the same ride, and it's not a good one. It's not the same ride. It has different music and vehicles, and, and people dance around it. It's very fun. All right. Anyway, so anyway. you're paying uh, for that, or you're waiting for several hours. But Beauty, Beauty and the Beast, Happy Ride with Baymax... Space Mountain. Honey Hunt. Surely Did Honey, Honey Hunt, Hunt have it? Yeah, it does. Or no. See, here's why it's here's why I'm blanking on it because there's several I won't buy, right? There's some I just won't. But so the DPA line exists, but the a lot of attractions may not have it. So like Honey Hunt. I don't think it would, it did have it. I think people were passing us with vacation packages. So there are vacation packages that give you vouchers like um, a fast pass like a fast thing. pass at attractions that don't even have anything offered currently, right? Um, but also they're doing standby. The other thing you have to check, again, this is going to be, whenever people watch this right now, I can give you current information. By the time you go, I guarantee you things will be different. Like standby pass is a thing, right? So they, I know for the for the rest of the fortieth after we left, they started doing standby pass for stuff, um, for like fortieth. Oh, prior, sorry, priority pass. Are you confused yet? Um, they started doing fortieth anniversary priority pass, which was kind of like fast free fast pass. So they had some stuff that kind of was using free fast pass. That's staying on for the time being, but that can end at any point. I could tell you this is a great thing, and then a month from now it could be gone. So. Um, I will tell you, though, everything's spelled out pretty clear in the app. Make sure you do your homework before you go because, again, I assure you, every three or four months, everything seems to change. What's on DPA, What is if there's priority pass, if things are using standby pass, which is another different thing. We had to use, when we went for the start of the 40th, we had to get standby passes just for shopping opportunities. So to go in the Grand Emporium, that day, the first day, we had to get a standby pass to use the gachapon machines. We uh, had to use a standby pass because of high demand. But then, like a week later, they took it away. So random days, it might just come back. Some days, like I can't tell you, like you might go to Disney Sea and be like, "Oh, I can't wait to shop for Duffy merchandise." You may not even know it's a Duffy merchandise release day. If it is. All of the Duffy stores go on standby pass for a couple of days, and you can't even go in them without having that standby pass, even if you want the stuff that's not new that day. Oh, boy. <laughs> and what about people with disabilities? Do they have a disability access service similar to what we have here? <sighs> they, they do. I will tell you, we didn't use it. My mother... But with the wheelchair, there are different accommodations with the wheelchair, and it really depends on the day and the cast member and the situation. So let's just look at Monsters, Inc., Ride and Go Seek. We're going to use one attraction as an example. One day we went in, and they let me with the, the wheelchair. I had the manual wheelchair. Um, I do not recommend the ECV. Don't rent the ECV from them. It's giant and green and is the slowest moving thing on earth. I'll send Billy this clip. This is the actual speed of my father in this ECV, and he's just like this. He's so annoyed and bored. It must go one and a half miles an hour. It's incredibly slow. I will tell you, they have a manual wheelchair that with a motorized assist. Okay. That's the best thing to use because if you, as you apply pressure on the handles, it will propel. So Disney Sea is a lot of hills. Disneyland's a very flat park. Disney Sea is the opposite. It is the par Disney park with the most changes in uh, 
altitude, if you elevation. Will, an elevation, yeah. Um, you're going to need it. Because one day they ran out of those, and we had the regular manual wheelchair, and I like got a, the workout of my life pushing them up the hill from uh, Mediterranean Harbor up to American Waterfront. It's, it's very steep, and it's cobblestone. Oh um, so I will tell you, one time at Monsters, Inc., they let me just push into the queue, and we went switchback by switchback all the way up to the front. Another time, though, she was like, how many people in your party? Oh, please come with me. They took us out of the line. She escorted us all the way to where the fast pass entrance used to be. And we went through there, and then she took us to a separate load area, a okay. special uh, load area all off to the side. And we went through a whole special load process, and it was great. This and it done... wasn't bad the other way either. They were super accommodating the other way too. Um, but we didn't say we needed the special load, but she just was like, I'm not busy right now. And, you know, we're, we're not, and there's multiple of us working up front. I will personally escort you in here and I will take care of you. But this is done attraction by attraction. You don't have like a, an all encompassing disability. There is um, a disability especially system. Especially for I people will with, like, you, with, without mobility issues. I will that, tell you it's very hard to maneuver, but uh, again, you'll have to just go to guest relations. If you have, yeah, I mean, there if are you people have something with, greater than mm -hmm. just I need a wheelchair, mm -hmm. go to guest relations and they will walk you through a process. I am not I have read, there is, you can go on their website, there is like a 40 page PDF that explains it has every single attraction and its accessibility requirements and what alternate accommodations are available. I, I don't need to sit here and explain it to you. I'm telling you this PDF is incredible and will break down every attraction and you'll know before you arrive what you can do and what you can't. Okay. So um, I would highly recommend if you have special needs of any kind, go download that PDF and spend an hour looking through it. I think they have one for each park, in fact. When I buy DPA, yeah. do I have an appointment to come back and ride the ride? Or is it when I get there, I get put in a separate no, it's queue? An appointment. It's an appointment. It's like Fast Pass, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, but but yeah, so that's how things went with the with the wheelchair situation. Again, like 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, we had a, a different procedure every time we rode that thing. It was They did something different. So, I don't know. Uh, but it all worked out. Everyone was super nice. And again, like um, the, the Disney spirit is more alive and well in Japan than it is anywhere else. So like I said, like that cast member, you know, the, the, the day they made us go through the regular queue, which is certainly procedure, um, there was only a greeter and there was no one else outside. And so she there was no one with that uh, just standing around doing nothing, essentially. Right. Um, but then. That day, there were a couple of them kind of standing around, and, and they never are doing nothing. Cast members in Tokyo <laughs> Disney are never just standing around doing absolutely nothing. If you're not busy, there's things you could do. You could wave. You could greet. You could. There's a million things you're supposed to do otherwise. But we arrived, and there were three of them standing there, and she's like, oh, well, I'm not. I'm not really doing anything other than waving right now. So let me, you you need assistance. Let me help you. And we had the most amazing personalized guest experience she provided for us. It was really fantastic. And that's the difference there is if, if they can go above and beyond, they will to an extent that you've probably not seen in the U.S. parks outside of a handful of individuals who really have a passion for what they do. Um, you know, it's not something you see in every cast member in the U.S., but... Um, it, it's something you'll see in most cast members in, in Tokyo Disney. Uh, my eyes stopped watering for a minute. I took off my sunglasses. I can actually look you in the eye. Um, all right. So let's just do an exercise then. Um, yeah. Maybe four must-do attractions in each park and a couple other experiences. Just four? Well, I... I have the map open if you want to just – I'll give you quick hits. I mean, how much can you actually get done in a day there? It sounds like not, lot, not a lot unless you're going to spend more than the cost of your pass to buy it, DPA for everything. No, it depends, right? So, like, entertainment is the challenge. So if you don't care about entertainment, probably. Be okay, fine. I'm there. You could probably – no, no, but see, like, that's the thing is that their parades are so much better. So, like, you'll see their daytime parade and be like, wow, that is fantastic. I need to see that. Now, there is, I will tell you for the parades, there are non-paid viewing areas. Yeah. It's not like you can't see it otherwise. And I will tell you, um, usually those sections have, depending where along the route you are, there will be a seated section up front. And then there is a line 
which you can stand behind. Okay. And I will tell you, as an American, you are likely taller than most people there. And so what I do is I don't always get the spot on the floor. I'll show up later. And even if I'm in the fifth or sixth line of people standing, I will have a clear view over everybody. When, when you purchase DPA for a parade, do you choose what area of the park you want to watch? Or it just says, nope, you're watching in Frontierland on the left side of the... It just it assigned you a spot. Okay. I think for Believe, there's an A and a B, maybe even a C. I'm a little rusty. It's been a year. But uh, I think for Believe, there are sections you, you actively pick. So if they're really into this, like I've seen Believe, Sea of Dreams. If I'm at Tokyo yeah. Disney Sea, is that a great time to ride stuff because everyone there is really into that? Yeah. So, but also because it's late and most people otherwise have gone home. So they're, okay. they're a commuter culture and there's a train to catch. So I will tell you, late evening, you should have the park mostly to yourself. Like, so why am I getting up at five in the morning? Because you got to see the entertainment. Oh, just the parade. So I will this, like this is going to Fantasy Springs is going to be different, right? So when Beauty and the Beast and and Baymax opened, like that was a that was a huge fight. So the whole park will rope drop Beauty and the Beast. I will tell you though, if you wait towards the end of the day, you know, at most maybe you'll wait an hour to an hour and a half. At the least, you'll wait twenty minutes. So just just hold out till the end of the day. Um, the thing to to warn you about is Tokyo Disney operates slightly different from any of the Disney parks in the world in that they do not stay open until park close. So ride queues close when they feel like they have enough of a queue that will go past closing time. That's at their discretion. So if it's a 60 minute wait for Beauty and the Beast, park closes at nine and it's 8 p.m., you better get in that line or they're gonna close it. So keep that in mind. Um, but like Beauty and the Beast, yeah, I mean, there was, the, especially that first year or two of the ride, I mean, still people are rope dropping. That line will go, like, that's all the way, way off in Fantasyland behind Space Mountain. That line in the morning will come out into Main Street, like past the castle, past Cinderella Castle, and start going down World Bazaar, which is their Main Street. So, like, that happens. Happy Ride with Baymax, that line gets bad in the morning. They'll be 45 minutes right off the bat for that thing. Um, if they're doing the early entry of any kind, um, some points it's – again, this is one of those things that changed all the time. Um, when I went in the fall, summer and fall of 2022, they sold an extra ticket where you bought early access to Beauty and the Beast and Baymax. Mm -hmm. It was fantastic. Very minimal weight for both of those things. Then when I went the next time, we just got early entry for – it was included with the hotel, the official hotel. Okay. It, that could change. If you do have an early entry opportunity of any time, of any kind, do it. That's a great way to get some stuff out of the way early in the morning. And essentially, uh, what what you can do is, what we did there was, I think we rode Baymax quickly, then we did Beauty and the Beast, and then we just decided, well, what do we want to get in line for, essentially, before it opens? And I think we did Big Thunder, and so we beat the line for that. Um, and I know the parks are very crowded. Um, yeah. But when it's cold out, is that a good time to go there? It doesn't matter. Winter? Still crowded in the winter? Yeah, it doesn't matter. doesn't matter. Um, I will say, like, what was weird was I prepared my parents for lines the, which they, lines, the, lines the like of which they had never seen before. And then they weren't there. I don't know what it was about that April last year. But, like, the 40th day, the actual anniversary day, park was packed. But no one was doing rides. So we, like that day, we rode Monsters, Inc. with a 20-minute wait. It was crazy. But then all the other days we were there, no one was there. And my, like, we passed food carts. There were food stalls and carts I had never not seen a line for. So, like, there's no line. And the two people, the two or three people that work in the stand are just in there waving. There's no one even around. They're waving at no one. But they have to keep busy. So they're just waving, and I'm like, I can't believe this. Do they There's wear those no big here. Mickey mittens when they wave? They can. Yeah. I, in food service, they don't because, you know, yeah. health. But, yeah. Otherwise, like, if they're at a cart, like a merchandise cart or something, yeah. But that's the that was the craziest thing was there were, like, the Tipo Torta cart and churro carts and popcorn stands. They're just, there's just no one there. It's like, I'm, it's like, I don't usually even get this snack, but there's no line. I feel like I have to do this right now. 
because this is such a rarity. <laughs> like the Tipo Torta, like the non-sweet potato one, I'm like, I don't even really like this, but I've only had it once because the line is 20 minutes long usually. Let's just go grab one. Let's, let's, I'll try it again right now with no wait. Yeah. Um, and the ride lines were short, but the, again, that's not typical. You can end up there during a holiday or, or a random weekend. It could be cataclysmic. I will tell you a fully cra- – I've been in that park with 70,000 people. Um, pre-COVID Disneyland, and it was the most enjoyable a park could ever be with that many people in it. Because again, there's a, there's just people are very mindful of other people around them, and so like, people aren't clogging the paths because if you're stopped, you get you don't. The American way is we just stop in the middle of the path, and who cares about other people? No, you stop there, you get dump truck, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. So in Japan, like everyone's pulled up, like seventy thousand people in the park. So like the the sides of the main path are jammed because people just with people just stopping. But then the middle, like you walk right through. If you're if you're making forward motion, you keep going. Yeah. Um, which was amazing. Also, it was quiet. Like I couldn't Fantasyland just full of people, and I just looked at the person I was with. And I was like, listen to this noise level. Like this noise level, despite this this park being packed is so low. Yeah. Like it's not no one's screaming or being loud or like this is fantastic. This is such a pleasant day, even though the ride lines are are very long. Like it's just such a pleasant atmosphere in here. It's great. Um and just a quick disclaimer. Um Fantasy Springs is gonna change the game on this a little bit. Yeah, and that's one where and, you're gonna need to buy DPA because yeah. you need you need DPA or a standby pass just to get in the land. So you have to get one for one of those three rides, or you can't get a four ride. You you can't get in. Didn't we have that for um, Galaxy's Edge for a while? Well, Galaxy's Edge, the the boarding groups were to enter the land for yeah. a hot minute. Yeah. yeah. Um, I will tell you, unlike Galaxy's Edge, this one's gonna stick because yeah. you cannot have sixty thousand people bum rushing one land, and it's actually gonna happen here. Because they're all going to be there for this one specific thing. So, you know, if you want to buy the vacation package with the act, especially if you're going in the first couple months, I will tell you, you know, come prepared. Get the vacation package with the access or be prepared to be outside that park at 5 or 6 a.m. And be prepared that you, because of the way DPA and standby pass work, you may only get to do one or two of those four rides in that one day. Right, because you're gonna have to pick. I will tell you, like once you book your one DPA and your one standby, the rest is probably gone for the day. Or, or I will tell you. Oh, maybe you can't even, just buy DPA for everything. No, if you, there's a time in which you can buy another one. Once the other, same as like Fast Pass, like a okay. time will roll around. Yeah, but this can, is. I thought since you buy, even this, though it's, it's paid, they still want to be fair. Okay. So, yeah, like you could buy that DPA. After you buy that DPA, the standby passes might be gone. That one DPA you have for Fantasy Springs might be the only thing in that land you're riding that day. That might be it. I assume they're going to do standby pass and stuff for the restaurants in the land. We'll let you know. Obviously, we're going. Um, yeah, that could be a nightmare, too. It could be. It might be near impossible just to eat in the land for a little bit. Like, I— Look, everything you thought the opening of Galaxy's Edge was going to be in America is what the opening of Fantasy Springs actually will be in Japan. Three, three lands? Is that right? And it like kind well, of they're, yeah, they're like in neighborhoods, if you three will. Three right? neighborhoods. It's one, it's one giant land, right? Four actual rides. We're not talking about – there's no like happy ride with Baymax, like flat rides. There's no little there. carnival rides. No, like the Tinkerbell ride's an outdoor dark ride. It makes no sense to say that, but um, it's kind of like an embellished Heimlich choo-choo train. Okay. Um, essentially. But then the other three are full-blown, like, D&E ticket mega attractions. So that's um, the Frozen attraction, Tangled. Uh, was, I forget the names of these things. They're hard to remember. Um, Anna and Elsa's Frozen Journey. Tangled. Uh, some, Rapunzel's Lantern Festival. Tinkerbell's Busy and Buggies Peter Pan. and Peter Pan's Neverland Adventure. That's the yeah. one I know. That one's easy to remember. Um, those are the four, but those other three are, are full, full-fledged full D and E ticket mega attractions. So they're going to be you know, quite the experience. Um, we had planned, and I don't know what's happening because things with the company are changing. You're leaving town. Somebody's got to stay yeah. here. We had been talking about going to Japan this late this spring. Yeah. Um, 
intentionally wanting to go before Fantasy Springs, yeah. just thinking there might be a lull. Um, and I, it doesn't look like that's probably going to happen. Otherwise, I don't yeah. know who's going who's, who's gonna to be here. Um, we could see Jake's how things like, are going. <laughs> Jake's like, I'll do it. I'll make all the calls. Yeah. You're like, I don't care. I'll be in Japan. We'll see how things go. Maybe um, you guys will feel like you're doing all right after four weeks of this project. Yeah, Maybe we'll you see. won't. Who knows? Yeah. But I will tell you, for that lull, that lull is going to happen. Yeah. You could see it just in the ticket pricing. So when I get there, um, beginning of April's a little busy because there's so many events kicking off, food and wine, um, the final ignition, Space Mountain, Donald's Quacky Duck City, um, Dreaming of Fantasy Springs. All four of those events kick off in the first, like, nine days right. I'm there. So it's going to be a little crazy. But May might be a sweet spot. Even so, like, those two weeks, those last two weeks before I come back for Stage 89, mm -hmm. ticket prices are down to $56 U.S., and you can tell it's going to be too incredible. Then they have Golden Week, though. There's a holiday week after that. But there's two weeks in mid to late April where it's going to be dead. And I assume then Golden Week will be busy. And then I think after Golden Week through the opening of Fantasy Springs, I think it's going to be dead again. <clears throat> but then after Fantasy Springs opens, I think C is Disney C is going to be a wreck, like an absolute disaster to get tickets for. Yeah. So just a warning. Um, so let's talk a little bit about the attractions. Yeah, sure. Um, a lot of them. Um, maybe seem familiar to people, but a lot of them are not. Yeah. And uh, so why don't you give us the highlights of the, you know, four or five best attractions in each park? This is so hard. Um, so what I like about the way I would describe Tokyo Disneyland to somebody is it's, if there was an incredible museum of Disney parks history, but at the same time, it also had, some of the most cutting edge, fantastic modern attractions, right? So on that note, starting with Tomorrowland, Monsters, Inc. Ride and Go Seek. Tremendous ride. Imagine the, the DCA ride for Monsters, Inc., yeah. but with full-blown animatronics, incredible sets, and it's interactive. So you have a flashlight and you use the flashlight to play flashlight tag. And what you do is you shoot the light at the the Monsters Inc. helmets, the little icon, yeah. and things will interact. So if you hit okay. them, things will pop out, things will happen. Do you um, actually hold a physical flashlight in your you hand? You pull it out of the holster. Yeah. Okay. So think of it like Toy Story Mania, but with flashlights. Okay. And no score. They don't keep score. But it is, I love it. I think the queue is amazing. Like the building is straight up the Monsters Inc. factory building. Okay. Like everything about it, the lobby, the whole thing, and the sets and the animatronics are t amazing. I love it so much. Must do. Um, then they obviously have a bunch of things that we have. Um, the Buzz Lightyear ride is the same one from California. Um, Stitch Encounter is going to be Stitch Live, which is also in Disneyland Paris. It's Turtle Talk, but with Stitch. Star Tours is Star Tours. There are some cool things to see in that queue, I will tell you. It's worth going in there if you have a lot of time. If not, don't bother. Um, one of the things that's club, so Club Mouse Speed. Let's talk, I want to talk about entertainment for a second because we have to talk about the entertainment or entry request experience. I was, I was going to do the entertainment later. You want to do – okay, we do. I that. just figured we'd do attractions. That's fine. I'm just going around the map, so I just okay. it sparked my thought. Space Mountain, unless you're going um, – by yeah, so they don't have DPA at Space Mountain. It's, that's the priority pass right now. Unless you're going by the end of July, Space Mountain will be gone. New Space Mountain is coming in 2027. You're not missing much. It was basically the original – Disneyland Space Mountain from 1977 okay. with some embellishments. Happy Ride with Baymax, like, Baymax, like Eric said, kind of Little Green Men, Alien Swirling Saucers, or Mater's Junkyard Jamboree. Um, but it has a really great soundtrack, and the, the thing that's caught on in Japan is people will gather outside the ride and do a choreographed dance to each music number. B-A-Y-M-A-X. Famous, Usimbo, happy ride. ride. Yep. Yeah. Um, and then even the ride operators dance while they're operating the ride. So it'd be a great ride to work if you want to get some cardio in. Yeah. I think it'd be great. I would work there. It just mm -hmm. seems like a lot of people have a lot of fun there. Enchanted Tale of Beauty and the Beast is one of the greatest things you'll ever ride in your life. I'm not going to get into it. There is a 40 minute or, or so. <coughs> Bless you. Excuse Recoughed. me. Whatever. Pardon me. Um, but. Uh, there's like a 40-minute or more honest review here on the channel. Go watch that if you want to know more. 
but you have to do it. It, it life changing attraction. Um, they have Mickey's Toontown, which is uh, in a lot of ways just the original Disneyland one. So if you want to see Roger Rabbit's cartoon spin as it used to exist, go for it. If you want to see, um, you know, Minnie's house and Mickey's house, Ride Gadget's Go Coaster, um, go in Chippendale's Treehouse, that's all the same. Uh, Donald's Boat. Uh, one thing they have that's different, their Goofy House got updated well before the, the one in, in Anaheim. It's Toy Story Mania in Goofy's house. Okay. So they have like a li Goofy's living room. You queue up, you go into Goofy's living room, and then there are stationary, the spring action shooters. And you paint Goofy's house. So it's projection mapped, and you paint his house. So you shoot paint onto things, and as you completely paint an item, it'll flip over and turn into something else or, you know, color in. It's very cute. I think it's worth seeing. It's it's a fun little diversion. I love their Toontown. Uh, for Fantasyland, Pooh's Honey Hunt. One yeah. of the greatest attractions ever built. Phenomenal. That's the priority pass, too, so that's the free fast pass right now, too. Uh, they have Pinocchio's Daring Journey, same as Disneyland, but just if, if someone cared about the lighting. <laughs> <laughs> if someone cared about you seeing the ride, um, it's that. So I will tell you, like, that was the most frustrating thing my first trip was just going on things that were clones and going, look at look at the difference. Roger Rabbit was one of those things. Now in California, Roger looks great. They cleaned what, it up. What were you? What were your hangups about the Pinocchio rides in the different parks of what Jiminy Cricket is smiling or not or something like that? Yeah, like Tokyo has a figure where he's actually smiling, and then the other ones they just reuse the one where he's like warning you to not go any further, okay. even when it's a happy scene. Then also we talked about the jackass scene, but that's that's a different podcast episode. Yeah. Go watch. I'm not getting into this rant now. You're not going to make me, Eric. <laughs> Small world. My favorite small world, because it's the Florida small world with a different facade. And if, again, if someone cared, b beautifully painted, bright, colorful, well-lit, and with the Disney characters mixed in, I love it. Phenomenal. Uh, they also have Mickey's Filler Magic, same as Florida. The lobby's a little nicer, but you don't need to waste your time. It's also in Japanese, so not worth seeing. Uh, they have the teacups. They have the carousel. They have Dumbo. The cool thing about Dumbo is it's the original 70s Dumbo from Magic Kingdom with the disco ball. Okay. So if you want a nostalgia trip. It's the know, actual ride. It's it's the actual old thing. Yeah. Um, did I mention Queen of Hearts Banquet Hall last time? No. The food so. is the food is okay. Maybe you did, but you have to eat at Queen of Hearts Banquet Hall because the interior is amazing. It's like using the sets from the Alice ride at Disneyland and the Alice Maze walkthrough in Paris, but as a restaurant. It's really cool inside. How's the food? Solid. It's fine. It's edible. Yeah. Good enough. Snow. See, so, now Snow White. I think you have to do. So it's the original '70s Snow White ride from Disney World. The scary where one. Where you die. The one where you die. Where the at witch the end. kills you. Yes, and it's very much in the complete original style. You have to see it. It's a must do. Must do. Uh, Peter Pan. Mostly the same. It's a weird amalgamation of the. Florida and the California one. And this, so they're going to have two Peter Pan rides. Yeah, isn't that weird? Yeah. I My thought is, so they, before they built Beauty and the Beast and Baymax and all that, the original Fantasyland expansion they showed, there's art out there, we'll, we'll show you the art, was a lot bigger. There was a yeah. lot more going on. So they had like an Alice in Wonderland area and they had like more villages they were going to knock down It's a Small World and rebuild it with two tracks. So they were going to have the boat track and then a hot air balloon track where you got in like a hot air balloon and rode through the ride. And so people would be down here going through the waterway and people would be above That's awesome. going through the balloon. Wouldn't that be amazing? So there were a lot of things they didn't really give details out of that plan. So maybe this is like, well, now we have a Peter Pan area at, at Disney C, we don't need a Peter Pan ride yeah. in. So maybe that's next. Who knows? Maybe that's going to go away. Splash Mountain. The best Splash Mountain ever built, which is weird because it was built at the same time as the Florida one, yet there are so many differences. Like the weirdest thing was 
I think they saw our Br'er Rabbit animatronic, which I always thought the Br'er Rabbit animatronics in Florida looked great. Yeah. They were like, no, we don't like the way that looks. Can you do a different one? And so he looks completely different, still as impressive and cool, but different. It's weird. And there's there's more animatronics. Like they copied more of the figures from Disneyland, from America Sings, and put them in. Yeah. There's more sets. It's it's gorgeous. And and it's a bigger mountain because they cover because Grandma Sarah's is in there. And oh, also, Grandma Sarah. It, it's like this whole giant wide rock range that goes so so far along the river. It's gorgeous and a must. It's the best Splash Mountain they ever did. So, Haunted Mansion is the original Haunted Mansion from Florida, if you want to see that, which I recommend. It's cool to see. Big Thunder. They're Big Thunder. Do they have a Hatbox Ghost? No. No, it's untouched. It's okay. the 71 Mansion pretty much verbatim. No MC Escher scene? No, like the original bride's still there. Yeah. The Heartbeat okay. Bride is still oh, there. Oh, good. Yeah, you'll love it. You love it. It's that's what's cool about this park. Again, is weird museum pieces or cutting edge, amazing new attraction. There's no in between, really. Um, so, Big Thunder is it's probably the most lackluster Big Thunder, but still, I think it's worth seeing. Um, Country Bears, a good portion of the show is in Japanese, but it is the original uncut Florida show. The nice thing is the two songs that were cut, or actually one of the songs that was cut from Florida, although they're all cut now, one of the original songs cut from Florida is still there in English, Devilish Mary. So you get to relive that. Okay. And you get to see what the animatronics look like when someone cares. It's, it's pretty great. Uh, what am I? All right, we're on Adventure Land already. Tiki Room with Stitch. I don't know if Jake's going to cut uh, off Jake's, the show. J- Jake's got his finger on the trigger. You should go see it. I don't love it, but I, I think it's worth seeing. Uh, their Jungle Cruise is really weird and has some stuff that has now been taken out of our Jungle Cruises here in the U.S. No dad jokes? If they are, I can't understand them. <laughs> yeah. But it's still worth seeing. There's a lot of weird stuff, and there's a weird different storyline that they added a couple years ago. Um, that's fun. And if you ride it at night, there's a couple of lighting effects. They, they, when they went in a couple years ago, they specifically like updated the story and also with the idea that it needed to be a little more interesting at night, they added some lighting and stuff that's, that's worth seeing. Um, I love the Western River Railroad. Um, due to laws in Japan about railroads, um, with, unless you, it had to be a certain length and only have one station, and then you could have a train without charging admission. Okay. It. That's why the monorail charges. They have to. Mm-hmm. Um, Western River Railroad, because that has one station, uh, even though it's the Western River Railroad and it's kind of a Western land attraction, it boards in Adventureland. Don't ask. Um, and so it's this little train ride. It goes around the two lands. It's gorgeous. And uh, my favorite transition ever for the um, – they have the primeval world. It, it, the primeval world is in Big Thunder. Oh, cool. So you pass the dinosaur skeletons in Big Thunder from the train and then travel back in time to the primeval world. Oh, that's great. It's really fun. Uh, otherwise, then you have Pirates of the Caribbean, one of the best versions because – Still have the auctioneer scene untouched. It's a weird, again, a weird amalgamation of Florida and California, mostly California. It's great. A must-see. And there are your, those are your attractions at Disneyland. All right, Tokyo Disney Sea. All right, now things get interesting. Oh, I, I know, because this is where switch all, the, parks. all the bangers are. I mean, there's bangers. At, I, I love yeah. Disneyland. Um, but Disney Sea is oh, it's my favorite park in the world. It's the best. So um, right up by the front, you have Soarin, Soaring Fantastic Flight, which is it's worth seeing. This is one that has DPA. Is it um, is the film the Soaring Around the World film? So I skip. It has two different scenes. Oh, two different scenes. They got rid of Paris. Yeah. They added Tokyo. Okay. And then the end scene is Disney Sea. Okay. So two different scenes. Also, the pre-show is the the queue is incredible, right? And the pre-show you have to see to believe. I don't know how they did it, and they've never done this at another ride. But like the painting comes to life, and then there are there's miles of Italian hillsides behind her, and it looks like they're really there. And I'm like, how did they do this? I still can't figure it out. It's insane. It's really cool. 
So you have you have to do. I know it's just Soren, but you have to do it. Okay. Yeah. Um, what else? Um, I think the Disney Sea Transit steamer is, is good to do. It's a little boat ride that just goes around the park. Um, but the views are their views you can't get otherwise because it's set down. Like you're on the bottom level of the park. Like I've said before, the park has layers, right. levels. And so you will ha get the most incredible photos and the most incredible views from the steamer. So you could use it as a transit system, right? They have some routes that'll run like from Mediterranean Harbor to Lost River Delta, or and then from another station, they'll do a full grand circle where it's just a nonstop tour. Either way, um, highly recommend. Uh, Fortress Explorations. You may want to skip this. You're like, oh, it's just a walkthrough thing. Don't. It's incredible. There's so much stuff to see. There's that uh, planetarium room with the spinning. I, I explained yeah. it to you because there's a reference to it on the treehouse in California. There's this incredible giant room where you turn dials and the planets spin around the whole room. It's really fantastic. Go check it out. Uh, what else? Um, all right, Mysterious Island. You gotta, you gotta do both of these things. They do sell DPA for Journey to the Center of the Earth. There are points in the day where you could probably get it at a 40 minute wait and that's probably good enough, but. This uh, is the Test Track slash Radiator system. Springs Racers Ride System. Yeah. Just done up a notch. Yeah. And the, oh, the pre-show, the Terravators, everything, the queue, this is a, a masterpiece. A What's a Terravator? I it's mean, an elevator that goes the land, through the goes earth. down through the earth. Yeah. So it's like. Um, We're going to the center of the earth, Eric. It's like you're at Gringotts. But yeah. better. Yeah. But like if someone spent money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and across the way, you have another one of my favorite attractions of all time, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, which is the free priority pass still at this time. So you can get that. But so this is I will tell you, usually that that'll have a short wait. This is like you're in a pod that looks like you're underwater, but you're not. It's not it's like Peter you're... Pan's flight, but they're submarines. Okay. Amazing. I love it so much. The best dark ride I think they've ever done. It's incredible. But um, surely it's not as short as Peter Pan's flight. No, it's much longer. Okay. Much longer. Uh, then you have Mermaid Lagoon, which is all indoors. It's a giant indoor kid's land. Um, they have Jumpin' Jellyfish, same as the one in California, just Skip indoors. Yep. You can or, or do it. A Blowfish Balloon Race is going to be Flix Flyers or the Inside Out Emotional Whirlwind. Yeah, skip that one. But with Blowfish... They have the Whirlpool, which is Francis's Ladybug Boogie, but they're waves. What? Probably skip that. Uh, they also have a the you have to go in the playground. Go in the playground. It's incredible in there. There's all sorts of weird, fun rooms and little sound effects and light effects. There's like a shark attack. Um, go in the playground and explore. You don't have to go up in the nets. Let the kids go up in the nets. But the other scenes, go, go walk around all the other spaces. Are there other adults, like locals, that are oh, going yeah. in here? Okay. Their client, I don't want the to, majority. I don't want to be looked at. Here's what's great about being a Disney adult in Japan, is you're surrounded by Disney adults. Because the main clientele, I may get the age group wrong, the main clientele of Tokyo Disney Resort is single women ages, I believe it's 18 to 34, something like that. That is the main clientele. A majority of the guests are adult women that come in groups. That's the thing. So children are actually rarer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> People with children well. are rarer. You will find them in this land, um, but there's definitely a lot less of them than there childless are adults. Childless millennials. In the park. It's a whole country of childless, childless millennials, right? They have a problem right now. They're, um, it's an aging nation. People aren't having kids. And it definitely shows at Disney parks in, in Japan. Uh, I have to recommend this. Scuttles Scooters. This is the what? one. This is, there are two rides. I've never heard are, of this. There are two Did rides. Did you just make this up? No. There are two rides in, in Mermaid Lagoon that are not in the building. They're outside. One of them is Scuttles Scooters. It's this weird, like, amusement fair ride where you ride in the shell of a crab. But they... They're like kind of weirded out by it because they're generally a very shy culture. Because you're riding in a crab? No. 
because you turn and face other people you don't uh. know. So you're all in a row going around this ride, and then at one point in the ride, this one will turn, and you'll face the strangers in some cases, if, they're, if you don't know the mm-hmm. people, and that becomes very uncomfortable. Because, yeah. I mean, as an American, I'm uncomfortable with that. I don't like yeah. to look at strangers in the face either. But in Japanese culture, it's even, you know, there's a little, people are a little more to themselves, for sure. Um, you know, not everyone, no one in that country is a Pete Carney. I had so, a, a sociology <laughs> class one time. Yeah. And we had to do weird little things like get in an elevator, but once you hit your floor, you turn around and face everyone else, like face yeah, to face. Yeah, right? It's ter- or terrifying. Get, get on like a bus. And sit next to someone. Yeah. You know, when there's empty seats. Like, anyway. But I made my parents do this. And they're like, why are we doing this stupid ride? And then we get in and we do the turnaround. And my mother just starts laughing hysterically. <laughs> like, just thought it was the stupidest thing and loved it. It's a cute little ride. I think if it's a five or ten minute wait, you should go do it. They then also have a kitty coaster that's outside. It's Flounder's Flying Fish Coaster. Uh, which is a lot like any other kiddie ride, but the the place making is real pretty. There's waterfalls, and you kind of glide over the water at one point. It's a, a very pretty, nice little kid coaster. Arabian Coast has the only two story carousel ever built in a Disney theme park. Caravan Carousel. Okay, it's worth a ride. Check it out. Um, Magic Lamp Theater is. It's presented in Japanese, so you may not understand most of what's going on, but I think. If you like the Aladdin film or you like Genie, I would go look at it. There's at least a cool animatronic in the pre-show. The 3D show is is fun. And I think enough of the comedy is – I think they tried their best to, to pick out some like universal slapstick comedy, things that will make sense even if you don't understand what's going on. Like I took my parents and they thought it was cute even though they had no idea what he was saying. So worth worth seeing. Don't wait. Sometimes that gets a real bad line. Um, it has the priority pass, the free fast pass right now. Okay. Um, go check that out. Sinbad's Storybook Voyage. Oh, your boy Shandu. It's closed the entire time I'm there. When did it, is it closed now? Until September. I'm going to cry right now. I'm so sad. <laughs> I'm going to go stay in Japan for a couple months and my favorite attraction's closed. Uh, this is an incredible, like, think of, like, it's a small world, but... With uh, Seven Voyages of Sinbad. Um, they redid this ride a couple years after Park opened. It used to be scary. It was basically like scary. It's a small world. And now um, Alan Menken did the music, which is incredible. Compass of your heart. And they brought in Shandu, this little baby tiger with the turban on his head. He's very cute. And it's it's one of the most charming and amazing rides. In, in Do they have a anywhere. Shandu meet and greet? No. They, but do they sell the merch even he when has the attraction is closed? He has a store. Is it open? Keeps, oh, yeah. yeah. The store is not at the exit of the ride. It's out in It's in Arabian Coast. It's in, like, the marketplace. Um, but you have to do it. You'll fall in love with it instantly. Um, something you probably don't have to do, Jasmine's Flying Carpets. It's much nicer than the other ones at the other parks. And there is a viewing area. You can go up on the viewing area, the second level, and, and watch the ride. I mean, I did look last week. Um, yeah. Uh, magic carpets of Aladdin's magic carpets, whatever at Magic Kingdom, still has two of the ride vehicles that do not move, and they're covered in tarps. And every couple minutes, you hear some very loud squealing oh of like God. mechanical parts Just grinding. Just rip it out. Just rip it out. Yeah. Get rid of it. Do us all a favor. Moving on to Lost River Delta, Raging Spirits, which is going to be um, identical track wise to Indiana Jones and the Temple of Peril at Disneyland Paris. Um, but very different theming, and uh, it's a fun no, little wait. coaster. If you can't do it, I've been told that I've been told by someone that the worst Disney attraction is Indiana Jones and Temple of Peril. It's not as rough now as it used to be. It can be bad. That I don't like the indie ride there, but it's much, Raging Spirit. I'll do Raging Spirits once a trip. Okay. Um, I, I, I took my father. I felt my it's father just like a low thrill coaster. It's a little. It's a little coaster with an inversion. And it has the coolest sign. You have to go, if you're not even going to ride it, go see the sign. There's a sign outside. I'm not going to tell you what it does. But something on the sign every couple seconds will move. That's all, The warning sign. That's all I'm going to say. It's very cute. Uh, Indiana Jones Adventure, Crystal, Temple of the Crystal Skull, which, oh, the free priority pass they're doing. Um, 
Indiana Jones Adventure from Disneyland, but I, I think it's better. But it works all the yeah, time. Yeah, it's up. It doesn't break down. Time. I think it breaks down, but just not as much. It is a different theme. The queue is in, incredible. We were just at Disneyland. How many times did we either walk by or it were in the queue when that road ride broke down? We were only there three days, and I'd say at least three times. We, we only went to Disneyland like uh, for a total of like one hour the first two days, and then the third day we went, and it was Adventureland Day, so there's a lot of people there. And it was down in the morning. It was down. It, it was, was down, down three was times down. in a day and an hour uh, that yeah. we had seen And then that we were in line. And it broke again. And it broke down for like 30 minutes or more. Yeah. 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 Too bad. Uh, what else? I guess what I'm asking is, was this a later iteration of the ride vehicle? So it's not so prone Six to... years later, this opened okay. at the park. So like one. dinosaur. Okay. But it's it's incredibly different. Go see it. The queue is unreal. Uh, Nemo and Friends Sea Rider, I recommend because it's just so different from anything we have. I used to hate this. My mother's favorite movie is Finding Nemo. And so I was like, well, we, gotta, we have to take her to see it. And we took her on. She loved it. She thought it was the, the cutest thing. So I might be in the minority. I've come around on it a little are bit. Are you in like floating tubes? It's a simulator. Oh, uh, okay. We'll I'm talk about uh, Aquatopia. Aquatopia is what yeah. I'm thinking. Yeah. But it's a giant, giant star tours. Okay. Giant star tours with less movement. So okay. more family friendly. You get shrunk into the size of a fish and then meet Nemo and friends and go on an adventure. And it's randomized. So there's okay. all different scenes. You could ride it more than once uh, and see different stuff. Aquatopia. Aquatopia looks great, right? It's so cool to enter that land. And there are there appear to be these floating vehicles going all around the water. Right. It's not as much fun to ride, but I still think people should experience it. I like it, but it's not going to blow you away. It looks more fun than it is. But it's actually like we saw when it broke down, like they basically raised the floor up yeah. or lower the water down. Yeah. And there's, it's only. It's a trackless it's, ride. It's a trackless ride in the water. So yeah. it is. But it's not fake, free right? Because it's on the floor. Yeah. It's just a little bit of water and they dye it so you can't see the bottom. Yeah. Um, if you watch the Eddie Sato interview, Imaginary Eddie Sato, we did an interview um, for Tokyo's 40th. Um, he talked about how they stole the, it was already in development and they stole the tech essentially for uh, Pooh's Honey Hunt. Um, which is a fun story. So this was already in development. This was going to be the first trackless ride ever, and then it wasn't. Honey Hunt stole its thunder. Uh, you can also board the Disney Sea Electric Railway from here. They're, these are these really cute little, like, trolley cars. They, it depends. They they look kind of like trolley cars, but they're it meant to be like the New York subway system in the early 1900s. Okay. Um, so you can ride those from this area down to American Waterfront. Gorgeous views. The the cars themselves are are really pretty. Must do. Absolute must do. Make sure you get enter the door that seats on the window side facing outward, though, because then you have a view of the ocean. So Port Discovery is actually almost up against the ocean. There's a fake wall there that looks like it's leaking, um, but but that blocks a road that's on the other side, and then just beyond the road is the ocean. Okay. So it looks like Port Discovery is actually on the ocean, and you get this incredible view from the electric railway. It's the most. It's park. The park will change your life. Change your life. Are we're we we're going to get you there, Eric. We're going to. Are we happen. missing anything? No, I'm going to I, uh, American Waterfront. Okay. Uh, which there's not much. Cape Cod doesn't have any attractions, uh, but then an actual American Waterfront, you have Toy Story Mania. The facade is better. The queue is interesting. You don't need to ride it. It's the same ride. If The thing, it is super popular in that park. It has DPA. It's that popular. Let, let them go clog that queue. You don't need to do it there, I promise you. Definitely go back there and look at the facade and look at the area. It's worth taking some photos of, especially at night. But you don't need to do it. You have, we have Toy Story Mania at home, kids. Tower of Terror, though. Tower of Terror, with its own unique storyline, an incredible building. It's not super thrilling unless you go right right now. They're doing like the unlimited version. I forget what they're calling it this year, but they're doing like the extra thrill version for the for the younger kids right now. But it still isn't as thrilling as like it's still not as intense. It gets as it is towards here. Guardians okay. now. It gets to that airtime, but otherwise the other season, regular season, it's it's pretty slow. It's not going to be as thrilling as Tower of Terror. 
Um, they will scream like it's as thrilling as Tower of Terror, but that's more cultural. Get thing it there. out. Yeah. Yeah, because they don't, that's, you, you can't, no one is loud in everyday life in Japan, right? Everyone's very courteous to each other. Um, and so Disney, the, the parks are a place where they can be, I don't, I don't themselves in, in a way. I think if you watch the Imagineering story, they talk about this a little bit. Um, but it's a place where they can escape all of the rigors of expected life in Japan, of social life in Japan, right? And so it's a place where they can smile and laugh and wave to people. Like waving is a big thing. There are so many, there are two types of attractions in the park. There are attractions you ride for fun and attractions you ride to wave. <laughs> So like the river boat is stand on the side and find people along the side of the river and wave at them and they everyone will wave back. I love it. So what's really fun is if you see the river boat or something going by or the train, look back and start waving. You will see the entire vehicle wave back at you, bar none. Like in America, you'll get maybe a kid and a couple people. In Japan, you will get everyone. Everyone cannot wait to look and wave because you don't make eye contact with people in everyday life. In that is not the cases. hand gestures you're used to from growing up in the Bronx. No. <laughs> no. Yeah. If you if you do this in the Bronx, you might get something else back yeah. in exchange, perhaps a finger. Yeah. Um, but uh, Yeah, my tower, glasses are back on. The eyes are watering. I know. I so you, you tried your best. I did it. But Tower is... The pre-show, the the story, sure the theming, the the oh my god, we we could do a whole episode just on Tower. Um, the and maybe we will this summer because there'll be thirty years of Tower of Terror around the world, so maybe we'll do something. Can you um, get me some sort of Shariki Utundu item? I think they have stuff right now. I don't really want the bat, the like plush bat. That might be all they have. Uh, right but now. if they if that that's I what, think that's all they have. Yeah. Plastic one now. I like the, yeah. I think they have something right now. But if not, I'm going to go. My favorite thing to do is to go to some of the, like, resale stores in Japan, the secondhand yeah. stores, and look for stuff. I'll see if I can find you some old shrieky stuff. Yeah. yeah. See what I can dig up. Um, but Tower is it's a must. And then uh, Venetian gondolas, which we talked a little yeah. bit about last week. I don't need to talk about it again. But Definitely do them. I suggest rope dropping. The line gets bad. If if you already got your DPA or your priority pass for something and everything's already a long wait, just go get the Venetian gondolas out of the way at that point because it's very low capacity. Yeah. Um, Sto what is Storm Rider? It's gone. It's gone. That's that's Sea Rider now. Sea Rider? What is Sea Rider? Nemo and Friends. Oh, that's Rider. Nemo and Friends. Okay. Yeah. That's how I'm getting confused. That used to yeah. be Storm Rider that... Oh, my God. We're going to go down this rabbit hole. I don't want to go down. I don't, let's not go down into it. It's a simulator. About chasing storms and blowing them up with missiles. Okay. Go watch a video on YouTube of Storm Rider. It's wild. Do we have it? We don't. No, no. it closed before I went. Okay. I, I, got, I never got to see Storm Rider. Oh. I never got to see the Cinderella Castle Mystery Tour, which was a trip, even though I, own the, I have the actual attraction poster for it. Um and I missed Sea Rider. I, I okay. regret missing those things. But this brings us basically to entertainment. I think. Yeah. Um, I'll try to do this. Quick. This is the stuff they're very passionate about there, and I yeah. know that uh, some of these people will go there just to see one show. Some of them will go to see one float, take a photo of it, and then leave. I once went to Fantasmic, and the guy in front of us had a tripod and all this very professional equipment. He's in the first row at Fantasmic, up against the water. And one barge comes out with the certain characters. I think it was Chip and Dale. or may, might have been someone else. I don't remember. He took his photos. He took a bunch, right? You could hear him clicking away every two seconds. He took also, this is eight minutes into the show, took his photos. He starts packing up, and he leaves. And then we're like, oh, guess we're in the front now. And we watch the rest from the front row. He sat there for, we sat there for two hours. He had to be there for three or four to take 12 photos of two particular characters. And then he left. I mean, we have people that might do that here. I don't know. But he didn't even stay for the rest of the show that he waited four hours for. He's just like, I've seen the rest. I'm good. I'll come back another day and shoot 12 photos of a different character. What? Huh? There's this guy in Japan right now telling a story. He's like, I, wanted, I went to see Fantasmic. I waited for four hours. 
I start taking my picture, and there's this annoying American guy behind me, and I just had enough of him, and I had to leave. <laughs> oh, All right, man. so entertainment. We have how many shows? Oh, I mean, there's a lot. Like, let's just talk about I'm gonna the big give ones. You a quick, I'll give you a quick recap. Let me, I'm going to do this so I don't forget something. Let me switch parks real quick. Uh, Club Mouse Beat is in the theater in Tomorrowland. Um, the first show of the day is Standby, and the rest are Lottery. Um, so only the first show of the day has a standby line. Uh, you have to enter a lottery in the app. I'm trying to pull it up now so I can explain this to you. It's It'll say entry request. There's a little magic wand and a sorcerer hat. And if you hit that, you essentially select a, a show time and how many people, and you're entering a lottery. And it will do a little effect, and it will tell you either you got it or you didn't. If you didn't get it, you can't enter for that show again today. Can I say something that might be controversial? This is a terrible system. I think that we should use lottery for boarding groups. Instead of waking up at 7... Why don't I enter the lottery yeah. and at 9 p.m. or 10 p.m. the night before they draw it, and then I wake up and, and then I go, hey, I need to be there at 7, or hey, I can sleep in, or I can go to breakfast? Yeah. Um, because I think so many people would complain, though. I know, it's but, not, but it's what it's come down to is who really knows how to navigate this system the yeah. best and who knows how to, like, click, the, click in the fastest, and yeah. you're still subject to all kinds of weird stuff, like somebody who I'm friends with who I'm not actually going to the park with them, but they are also booked for the park that day. So all of a sudden, I'm, like, grouped with them, and it can throw me off if they're not yeah. friends with someone that's in my group. You know what I mean? It's, yeah. It's a big mess. I would rather just say, I want to enter the lottery for these two people, and then at 10 p.m., they go, okay, you you got into the lottery, or you got chosen uh, your boarding group, you know, 94. Yeah. And I go, well, I know boarding group 94 is going to be after 10 a.m. or something like that. Yeah. That seems to make more sense to me. Anyway. Maybe I will tell you here in Japan, like they would have to do it this way because if they did it the way we do it, everyone imagine a world where everyone knows the system, right? Right? Imagine everyone knows, you know, how to work that boarding group thing in the morning. Imagine 50,000 people knowing how to work that, like it'd be chaos. It is better for them to just do it this way. But I understand both systems aren't perfect, right? Because I will tell you that trip, like we we went to the parks a lot. Like I prepared to go at a, a slower pace because my parents are older. And so we knew, I was like, we're going to have a lot of park days and we'll figure this out. The only show we didn't win the lottery for was Club Mouse Beat. So our last day in the park, we had to wait an hour and a half outside the theater to do standby for Club Mouse Is it Beat. worth it? What is Club Mouse Beat? It's Give basically me the like 32 a, second version of Basically it. like the the character stage shows in front of the castle but uh, with a much larger budget and more characters that you're not used to seeing. So it's it's characters in costume. Character dance show. Dancing and It's a fun show. I like it. Live singing or just No. Just lip syncing and Yeah, lip syncing. Yeah. Okay, dancing around. Yeah. Okay. Uh, then by Beauty and the Beast, uh, there is Mickey's Magical Music World, which is a phenomenal show. Um, same thing. They do the lottery with that. Okay. Um, highly recommend. Again, a notch above. More like um, – trying to think what to compare it to at the U.S. parks. Kind of more like the Frozen musical at the Hyperion, stuff okay. like that. It's along those lines, I would say. Uh, trying to think what else is important. Obviously, the parade. Living in, or uh, is it Living in Color? Is that the name? Well, that's the Thunderland Parade. Where's my, oh, Dream Lights. Electrical Parade Dream Lights. Oh, at night. A can't miss. You yeah. will. Main Street Electrical Parade if it were steroids. like modernized too. Not even on steroids, like way more floats. It's so long. And all the lights work. Disney Harmony in Color. Why is it blank? I'm just thinking of the song. Uh, Harmony and Colors, a daytime parade, another can't miss. That one they do sell premiere access for. They actually do sell premiere access for that start after last time I visited. Electrical Parade has premiere access too. I don't think you need it for Electrical Parade. Harmony and Colors is going to be more popular. You may want it, but you could probably find a spot along the route. Now, like I told you, the seasonal stuff, like this Minis Funderland thing, because it's such a short run and they're all there for it, you're going to need DPA or you're going to need to sit as soon as you get in the park for a few hours. Right? So if that's – their one performance is at 1540. What is that? That's – That's 340. That's 340. People will people will sit for that probably the second the show – or they might sit through. They might sit for the daytime parade and stay through for that. 
Um, are there any shows with live singing? Big band beat. I don't know if the – I'm forgetting if a special treat has it because there's this shorter version of – Big band beat now. They they haven't fully recovered. They haven't done the the regular version. And yet. is there any entertainment at the resorts? At like the in hotel? the hotels? No. Yeah, like there's not a uh, no hoopty doo review. No. Or... There are dinner shows in the park, right? So um, one of them just came back, the one at the Horseshoe, which is the Diamond Variety Muster, which requires reservations. I need to do that while I'm there. I've still never done that. I really need to go see that. It's a character show with like dancers and such. Okay. Um, I can't speak more on it because I haven't seen it. Um, I didn't see the old show there either. Uh, what is that? Oh, those are characters. Um, yeah, the show didn't come back in Adventureland. They don't have a show. Oh, no, Jamboree Mickey's there. That's the kids' show. If you have small kids, go see it. If not, see when it's happening, go stand in the back and just watch people. Because all the, again, like I told you, the Disney adult thing, this is meant for children. They've all learned the dance. And so you will see from a distance the whole crowd of adults, full-grown adults without children, doing this choreographed dance. And it's incredible. I like to go see it when it was I've seen that. I think at at Universal, uh, at USJ, a big thing is people learning all the dance moves. That's all the entertainment. That's the thing. They're they're real big on crowd interaction and getting the crowd to, to engage. In the show, yeah, that's a big thing. Disney, see, there's not a whole lot of entertainment. This will take two seconds because they've killed all their entertainment because because money. I can't believe we've gotten to the point where I'm now criticizing OLC, but we got to that point. Um, so they're still doing – there will be some sort of what they call a harbor greeting. Um, like it's going to be the Fantasy Springs one for a couple months next up, and then their seasonal ones usually. These are literally just a, 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 a pier and wave is what people call it. Kind of like the pontoon boats at Animal Kingdom? Yeah. But a larger crowd will gather. But like nicer boats, yeah. Yeah, a larger crowd will gather. But it's not much more. Literally, boat comes out, music playing, characters wave, wave to this side, wave to that side, and then they go back, and they'll do it for 10 minutes, and then they go back. But it's like they consider it a show. That's, again, like the wave at the characters take their pictures. That's really important to those guests. So don't. my suggestion is do not waste a lot of time waiting for this thing. If you happen to see it from afar, that's great. But this is not appointment viewing. Can you book um, character meet and greets with DPA? No. No? That's no. just a standby pass. Some of them do deal. standby pass. Okay. Yeah. Believe, See a Dream's a Nighttime Show, highly recommend. Fantastic yeah. show. I recommend buying the DPA just so you don't have to waste too many hours waiting. You still have to show up a bit before the show with DPA, but it's well worth it, I think, to know you have your spot. You can go do rides and stuff you want to do. Uh, is there even any other entertainment? Mermaid Lagoon Theater didn't come back. Hangar Stage still hasn't come back. That might be it. Oh, Big big Band B. Be- oh, the Duffy Show came back. That's right. I haven't seen this yet. Duffy and Friends Wonderful Friendship. Uh, you have to make a reservation. I'll bet that's it. the big seller. That's why we haven't been. I need to go do that. I haven't seen that yet. Um, but it'll be, it's a character stage show with Duffy and friends. And it'll, it is an experience, like full grown adults with carrying plush around and really engaged in this show. It's, it is the most Japanese thing you'll see at Tokyo Disney. And uh, back over at Disneyland, do they have like, uh, Dapper Dan's and Streetmosphere and all that kind of stuff. There's a there's a guy that plays a, a traveling piano, a piano okay. on wheels. Oh, yeah, there I've seen is that. the there's a band. Yeah. There's the marching band, um, and then there are little musical groups and a lot of characters okay. walking around. Uh, but that's yeah, they don't have some of that stuff. Disney Sea has very little of that currently. Um, and yeah, the only other thing left would be oh yeah, they're still doing. I like to go see Jamboree Mickey at. Uh, an American waterfront because you can go up on the boat and look down and you'll just see mobs of people dancing. It's kind of fun. Go to the last one of the night. Last one of the night's always the the wildest. But then the only other show is what's left of uh, Big Band Beat, which is Big Band Beat, a special treat, which is lottery. Um, I recommend seeing it. It's not my favorite. The full one wasn't my favorite show, but people rant and rave about it. If you If you haven't seen it, it's worth seeing. I wish the full one would come back at this point, but... Um, it's one of those shows that has it's it's been there forever now because people love it. So recommend. 
Okay, great. Um, I've accepted that we're not going to be able to cover everything. There's the certainly podcast. stuff we haven't, but um, I think we've done But I think you've primer. given people a good uh, base of knowledge of how this place is going to work. And obviously, um, like, we're going to, in the time I'm there, mm-hmm. we're going to cover everything. So between the vlogs, um, between the, like, how-to videos, the posts on the website and everything, if there is any stone we haven't uh, turned yet, we we will in between now I think, and the summer. I think a big one that we haven't touched on that we're not going to have time for is shopping. I don't want to get. In, I don't want to get into individual stores. No, don't worry. I'll vlog. But I'll vlog lots of shopping. What I'm curious about is, uh, do they have some kind of, um, you know, buy something and they ship can ship it back for you? No, no that does not exist. No. So whatever you buy, you got to haul it home. Yep. If you live in Japan, they'll you can order stuff from the app and they'll mail it to you. Mm-hmm. But you have to live in Japan. Yeah. So. I mean, you'll have an address. Technically, yes, but I I don't like that. I'm going to the park on the day that stuff is released. I want to grab my giant Space Mountain pillow off the shelf and hold it and take it home. That's the excitement. That's what you I are like going to be in this. I, I just know this is going to be like a micro apartment you're in, <laughs> and it is going to be stuffed to the gills with merch. There's Space, not that much coming. Giant out pillows. There. Your your bed is actually going to be like your real pillow is going to be like one of those giant churro pillows. I think that's great. Uh, a big a big gelatoni on there. Yeah, Space Mountain pillows. Uh, you're going to get your shower curtain. Your Tokyo Disneyland shower curtain. Your whole I, I can already see what this place is going to look like. I don't know how big it's going to be, but I think it's going to be it's very not, small. It's not big. Have you seen pictures of it? Yeah. Like. The hotel room size? Yeah. Value resort? Uh, yeah, somewhat. But right. I have a kitchen and such. Like okay. it, it's a place to We're live. Good. Not that I'm living in Japan. I mean, this is basically just an extended yeah. vacation. Yeah. You know. Well, we're looking forward to it. I mean, you're looking forward to it. I so. Yeah, why would I not? I mean, <laughs> so uh, thanks for your insight. I think it's valuable to the viewers to learn some of this stuff. It certainly makes me feel more comfortable about potentially planning a trip to Tokyo uh, Disney Resort. And um, viewers, if you want to uh, ask us more questions to put in the comments, Tom does answer questions from time to time in there. Obviously, we could have a future episode on this. Uh, we're more than happy to do that. If you want to become a Wigs member, uh, they're watching us record this live and interacting in I'm Discord. In you can go to www.nt.com slash Patreon. One last plug. We are wearing our park candy shirts. I'm not wearing a park candy Oh, shirt. no, I am. Uh, it is stretchable. It is comfortable. Um, they have a variety of designs, and you can see more. They, they have skirts that match these, dresses, um, the whole thing. So if you want to learn more about that, go to parkcandy.com or go to www.nt.link slash parkcandy. Either way, if you use the code WDWNT at checkout, you'll save 15%. You can support the people who support us. So we'd like to thank you for watching, and we'll see you next time on the WW News Today podcast. See you real soon. Sorry, news is breaking. See you real soon. (laughs)